Well, let's take it day by day. You know, it's we don't have a set timeline on it. Um, looking forward to again him getting back and he's in the return to play the PUP, and then hopefully he gets healthy and comes out there and competes. Do you anticipate him at some point being available, or is it one of those? Not being evasive, probably I have a better, clearer picture probably about a week. How did you feel the first day went, Coach, and um, excited to get back out there? Yeah, excited. The track? You know, we're, we're in the ramp-up period, so you're, you're limited with the time, which is a good thing, and I'm not saying that complaining. I'm just kind of letting you know what's going on out there. So I thought it was a competitive first day as we're trying to build these guys up, uh, you know, so we can be full swing into the camp. And what are, what are some of the early goals of all you are ramping up? Obviously, like everything, you come out here, you want to improve. You, you want to obviously fundamentally get better. You want to eliminate things that get you beat pre-snap. Uh, and we just, there's a healthy competition. We got good competition at just about every spot. Comparatively speaking to where y'all were a couple months ago, for Marcus and Desmond, how much do you expect them to know at this point, even on day one of training camp? We expect them to know what we're installing again you know we have different ways we go about it but things we put in that's their job as professionals especially at that quarterback spot they need to know it and uh, both of them doing a good job a lot of teams talk about um, like their identity the team like when do you start seeing that in here when do you start building that in yeah, I mean you start building you know how you kind of players you bring in here um, mindset I think you know as you as you work and you start to try to build confidence and you hope we do need a better job being ready to go week one and then we, as we get through this camp. We're going to be competitive and we're going to be a team that's going to go out there and fight you. And, but we got to work and we, we got to get better and we got to eliminate things that can get you beat, especially pre snap. How do you enhance that on a day to day basis? You bring the guys in, but then how do you reinforce it on a day to day basis? That culture or ethos or whatever you want to call it. How do you do it? Well, there's, there's a lot of ways to do it. So, what exactly are you asking? Is it a certain way you practice? Is it a certain way you, I mean, some, some people, you know, we pick up every piece of trash and we throw it in the trash can, you know, you know not whatever it may be. It's the way we work, the habits, the messaging, and you let these guys have real competition. And so you come out here and you, and you do drills and you try to set them up and everything we do has got practical application to, to what helps you win and improve on the field as you improve individually and as a team. And so it's just something you emphasize every day, and you got to make it competitive, and then you got to reward those guys that compete and win. I hear a different place, different team. Um, I've said it many times. There's not the the unknown. I mean, there's things that are going to happen every day. You got to be ready for it. But yeah, you're, you've got to you've been through a season. So just like a, a guy that's, I would imagine Kyle camps. He's got a little better perspective going in this camp too. Well, I mean, it's, I mean, those are the obstacles that came our way, right? And so you gotta you you gotta assess it and you gotta find a way um, through it. It's just a different team. I mean, things came up last year, something in your, in our control, something that was out of our control. But that's I mean, that happens all around the league. Guys, tire, injuries, whatever it is, um, we'll, we'll deal with any obstacles in the way we won't make excuses. But it, it's a completely different team. I do feel like there's uh, better competition, probably more depth. That's one thing that's pretty apparent to me right now. More depth and also some of the guys who are coming back, how much do they sort of benefit from this? Yeah, I've been here. They know, you know, they know how we coach, know what we emphasize. Hopefully it would help them accelerate their improvement as well. Oh, I'm, sorry. I'm sure you self-evaluate, like, you look back at calling, whatever, and you I don't know what narrative you're trying to wind down, but no matter no matter if we were to have a 600-yard game and you win big or you lose, we I evaluate it all the time, all the time, and I, I won't stop doing it. Hey, Arthur, what's your philosophy on managing the heat? Um, today was a great day in terms of weather-wise, but you talk yeah. about the ramp up. Is there a process for the players to even there acclimate is. to to getting there ready is. to work? Um, obviously, the weather can change here pretty quick. That's been my experience living in Georgia, especially here. Some days are more humid than others. Seems uh, rain can come in quick. 
uh, we try to make sure that just like every team I've been a part of, but it's certainly different from the Junction Boy era of D-Led, but we have hydration stations. I mean, it's it's pretty pretty standard operating procedure from most colleges and, and NFL teams. But in terms of the players working in, under those conditions, do, is there a change for them as they come Absolutely. and go through training camps? Yeah. Especially as you lengthen practice, your conscience is when you give breaks, we try to best prepare. And then sometimes you have to adjust. I mean, you get lucky, and some days it's get a little cloud cover. It's a cooler. Going back to what Tori was talking about earlier a little bit, um, what exactly do you want to see from them during this ramp up period? Well, I mean, we're still out of practice. It's just you just don't get the amount of – we're going to increase reps every day. Um, so as you script it out and, and you plan out the practices, you, you hope they, they have a better handle in the command of the huddle and operating really just doing their bottom line job description. In the quarterback, complete the football, can you run the huddle, can you get us into the right checks. So you're evaluating all that stuff every snap. Um, that's the guardian cap. That's a league initiative with health and safety. And so that's something that um, I believe the health and safety committee Great question for Rich McKay and last the league, but um, those, are, those are what they, you know, you'll see it all around the NFL. It is. It's mandatory for certain positions. Um, it's through preseason two and then encouraged from there. It's been a long time, Mike, since I played. I, I just I ask these guys, you know, how it is. I mean, it's a mandatory thing. It's an effort to try to improve the health and safety of the game, and so we'll, I'll have a better feel for that as we get through a couple practices, and I'll, and I'll continue to ask them. But at the end of the day, it's a league initiative in health and safety, and everybody's got a, has, has the same rules. How did uh, Keith Smith or Taylor look? A couple guys who were waiting to get back. Yeah, I thought, like I said, like I told you guys in the spring. And we got all, almost all of our guys out here. We've got one player on PUP. And, uh, you know, we'll evaluate them every day. All those guys, Isaiah, Tabor, and it, all these guys that are coming off off of something. So I thought that for day one, snap judgment, I thought they looked pretty good. It's not like you have a lot to go off of, obviously, after day one. But what in your mind is a successful day one? Well, it's, it's going to air. You don't have a lot of mental errors. You can operate. You can function. There's always something. I mean, that's why you practice. It's never going to be perfect, but you're trying to eliminate things that get you beat that you're in control of. And uh, especially a huge emphasis on some of the stuff pre-snap. Some of it's obvious when you're watching practice. Some of it's not obvious. Like I said, the communication. Um, so I thought overall, I thought it was a pretty good get, pretty good day. But there's always stuff we got to coach and improve. Without reviewing film or anything, do you feel like some of these younger guys are, are there? They're not making a ton of errors. I'm not going to give a statement on the young guys right now is their very first NFL practice. So I'll, I'll withhold judgment. I was going to ask you about something regarding that. Uh, how much do you look for retention from what you guys did? In the yeah, mentally, certainly. And there'll be more, you know, when you get through the film and as you get through the another installation mentally, I thought the retention part was pretty good mentally. It's just there's so many variables. These young guys, I mean, the, the nerves, the Trailing's going before you ever take a snap. So I'll just with, withhold judgment on someone. But th I thought the retention was pretty good. You're sticking to two quarterbacks like you did during the offseason uh, program. Do you envision that changing at all? Is it still because you're trying to get done those reps? And yeah, I mean, we'll still give Felipe some reps um, at certain points. Uh, but, you know, when you got a limited number of reps, we're, we're trying to make sure Marcus and Des get as many as they can. But they're certainly, just like you would, whether it was Felipe or somebody else, you had as a third quarterback and an emergency quarterback, you got to have a contingency plan. Uh, but at some point, certain days, you'll see Felipe do a little bit of quarterback stuff. And have you seen Mariota and Cal Pitts as their chemistry and relationship development? Uh, one that you know they're working on that chemistry, right? They've only been around each other for a short time, but at, um, I, I, you see it kind of building, and you hopefully it continues to progress. That's a very fair statement, and you know, the expectation is when 
pick up Chris's option and, and you, you pay Jake that those guys need to start. Now, if they're, they, they didn't perform, then we got to, you know, we got to look at our decision making and it, it doesn't mean they're set in stone, but the expectation is those two for sure should be starting for us. The rest of them, up for grabs. We're going to make it fair. We're going to, yeah, and we're going to, we're going to evaluate it and it, it'll be a fair competition as best it can. We got to make sure we're intentional about the rep counts we give them. When we give them, you know, the reps with the, the first group, and the second group, uh, it's got to be a fair competition. How important is it to identify those five units five quickly so that they have more time to get it? Yeah, I mean, I think you would hope you could get it sooner than later, but I mean, I'm not going to force it. If the guys are neck and neck, you got to let it play out. But certainly, you, you like to have that chemistry. Uh, but just like it happens in the season, right? You kind of have to deal with different injuries, and if there's certain guys that, that are flex guys that have to go play guard and swing back out tackle, fine. But yeah, but I'm not gonna put a timeline. Can you evaluate it? Guys played, the guy that's pulled the ball in the NFL, and uh, I think at camp it's really valuable when you got guys that can give you that guard center flex, and he's done it. In real games, so um, you gotta I'll have every opportunity as well to compete for a job here. What you got? What you been made about the quarterback competition? We just talked about the O line. Talked about the running game and the overall impact that will have on the quarterback competition, establishing it and having the running game. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of factors to improve the run game, and we feel like there'll be a healthy competition there too. As it, as it goes on and through the preseason, we got to make sure we, we give those guys enough carries to evaluate them.